the average cost of a funeral is over $7,500? Are you or your loved ones prepared for this financial burden? If you're age 85 or younger, the Senior Care Plan from Senior Life Insurance Company can ease that burden by paying up to $30,000 for funeral and any other final expenses. There is no medical exam and you'll have lifetime coverage. Your rates will never increase your benefits will never decrease and your plan cannot be canceled by senior life to receive free information about the senior care plan and to lock in your lowest rate possible call the number on your screen now also receive information about a free prescription discount card by calling now don't leave your loved ones paying your debt call 1-877-896-4186 now you have no obligation operators are standing by Call now. Come in. Well, good morning, Cromwell. Good morning, Patricia. Mr. Passendecker. Good morning, Pat. Is Mr. Brown in? Yes, he is. Just a minute. He's expecting you. Mr. Brown, Cromwell and Mrs. Hassendecker to see you. Oh. Send them right in, Pat. Please go right in. Thank you, Thank Pat. You. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Excuse me. That's quite all right, young man. Yes, I... What are you staring at? Pat, did you see that lovely lady in that gorgeous coat? Oh, how could a girl help but notice that coat? Gee, a mink like that must cost thousands. She looked mighty elegant, all right. Her husband must be terribly rich. Oh, her husband didn't buy her that coat. Her little son Cromwell bought it. Her little son Crom... You mean to tell me that that little fellow there... Well, that little him? fellow is the star of the Have I Got a Problem quiz show. He's a wizard. Oh, he's the kind of a son any mother would be proud of. Yeah. Well, what's the matter? I was just thinking, that's all. Now, what kind of a question is that? All right, what have you ever done for your mother? When? When? Ever? Huh? Come on. Fred? All right, I'm thinking. Mm. All right, I fixed a running faucet for her last week. There. You fixed a running faucet for your mother? Yeah. Big deal. Did you ever think of buying her a mink coat, Fred? A what? A mink coat for your mother. Huh? Well, frankly, no. Have you? Well, frankly, yes, I have. You have? Yes. With what? Huh? Yeah. What are you going to use for money? Well? Well, I'm, I'm thinking now. Well, you better forget about it. Well, look, if that little genius Hassendecker can buy a mink coat for his mother, so can I. Are you talking about Cromwell Hassendecker, the child star? That's right. Well, now, you can't compete with a kid like that. He makes a fortune. Gee, his mother looked awful pretty in that mink coat. Well, sure, anybody would look awfully pretty draped in mink. You better stop dreaming. Hey, come back, Shane. Forget it, will you? Remember, you're just plain Mickey Mulligan. Look at that coat. Look at that coat. Look at that coat. Look at that coat. Look at that coat.
I'm on the floor. <laughs> Good morning, dear. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, son. Good morning, Pop. It's too bad that you didn't sleep well last night. I didn't sleep well. I slept wonderfully. You did? Yeah. You feeling all right, Michael? <laughs> he hasn't any temperature. That's the trouble. Always worrying about me. Tattered and torn with a halo of gold. Huh? What are you... Who's tattered and torn? Well, it's not your fault, Father. It is I who have fallen short as a son. <laughs> now, Michael, we wouldn't want you one inch taller. Eat your breakfast. I want to run down to McCleary's. They're having a clearance sale on coats. No. Well, no! You've been wearing clearance sales and bargains long enough. You deserve better than that. Better things than what? Than this. What's gotten into him? All I know is I deserve better than... Than this. My full coat. Yes. What are you doing with that? Well, Mom, it's... It's, it's nothing but a rag. Michael Mulligan, that is no rag. I'll say it isn't. I bought that for your mother's birthday. It costs fifty-nine ninety-five. And it's very good imitation camel's hair. Fifty-nine ninety-five. Imitation camel's hair. Why, Mommy, if anything, you deserve... Imitation mink. Well, for goodness sakes, Nell, go down to McClear's and get yourself an imitation mink. If you can get one for fifty-nine ninety-five. But I don't want an imitation mink. I have my eye on an imitation Persian lamb. No, no, don't, Mom. I already feel like an imitation son. <laughs> I don't know, Mick. I'd advise you against it. I've just got to do it, Freddie. Oh, you should see, Mom, the way she goes around singing and smiling all day. She doesn't realize how unhappy she is. The poor woman sounds almost pathetic. Bye. Yes, Mr. Brown? I'll see Mulligan now. You can go in now, and good luck. Angels fear to tread. Hey, flick on the intercom. Oh, no. Go ahead. You know what? What? I could have told him that quietly. Do you know how many years it would take you to pay back that amount of money? That's... that's unimportant, sir. Yeah, I can see that to you. But it happens to loom largely in the eyes of our accounting department. Well... Couldn't you give me a little advance against my salary? I'd, I'd pay it back and work nights. Well, do you mind telling me just what you want this money for? Mr. Brown, does your mother have a mink coat, sir? Yes, she does. What does that have to do with it? Excuse me for asking this, sir, but... Did... did you buy it for her? Yes. You're a wonderful son. I'm a wonderful son? <laughs> Well, just so happens that I have a wonderful mother. I have too, Mr. Brown. Oh, I'm sure of it. Maybe you, your mother and my mother should meet sometime. No, sir. Never the twain shall meet. She hasn't got a son like you. She's got me. <laughs> Am I wrong in gathering that you wanted this money to get your mother a mink coat? Is that it? Yes, sir. Well, I think that's a very admirable desire, Mickey, but don't you think it's a little bit beyond your present position? Well, other sons have done it. I was twice your age before I could afford one for my mother. And I'm twice Cromwell Hassendecker's age, too. Oh. Oh, I see. Tell me... Has your mother asked you to get her a mink coat? Ask me? No, no, she's too proud, Mr. Brown, but I... I know that she secretly dreams of it. Has she told you that? No, but I... I know of her dreams. I was there. Well... Mickey, I'm sure the day will come when you can do all the things you want to do. 
Now, in the meantime, just work hard. Keep your eye to the future and save your money. Uh, but, Mr. Brown, sir, does, does that mean no? I'm sorry. But, but think, winter is coming on now, Mr. Brown, with the slush and the ice Mickey, and the this snow. is California. The fog? <laughs> Smog? No. What did he say? Did you get the loan? No, but he was very understanding. Well, at least that's something. Mickey, why don't you forget about the mink coat? Pat, I'm not about to forget about it. You know, it's too bad your mother wouldn't like a chinchilla coat. Now that she might be able to have. Freddie, I'm not going to give my mother anything but the best. Are you kidding? Chinchilla's the most expensive fur next to sable, Mick. It is? Sure. Hey, I got a friend of mine let you have a pair of chinchillas for very little money down. The rest you could pay out later. Hey, that, that might be a great idea. Cuts out the middle, man. And after all, that's how they get their coats, isn't it? And it's cheaper, too. You've got a wonderful idea. Freddie, I'll raise my mother a coat. <laughs> Fur coat for you here. Fur coat? Yeah. <laughs> I think it just made a noise. Michael, you didn't go to that sale at McCleary's, did you? Mom, you're through with sales at McCleary's. I still say that coat's trying to say something. Where did you get me a fur coat? You'd never guess. I'll bet if you ask that coat, it'll tell you. <laughs> All right, now, now get prepared. In one minute, you're going to be on your way to being the best dressed woman in town. You take those right back down the cellar where you trapped them. No. Those aren't mice. They're gophers. <laughs> gophers? Pop, Mom, look, don't you realize these are genuine South American chinchillas? <laughs> oh, you, you see your little cuffs running around in there now? Well, in no time at all, your pockets will be running around with your collar. <laughs> oh, you don't have to be afraid of your coat. <laughs> Look at them now. They're cute little devils, aren't they? Well, frankly, I can't quite see dressing up in them. Yeah. You'll be the prettiest lady in the Easter parade, Mom. Yes, I can see you now. Chasing that coat all over Sunset and Vine. <laughs> Mom, don't you realize that a chinchilla coat is more expensive than a mink? And you can look at it this way, Nell. Until you're ready to wear it, you can take your coat for a walk around the block. <laughs> well, aren't you happy? Oh, sure, I'm happy, dear, and I think the thought's wonderful, but I'm still a little dazed. Uh, now, now, you see this one with the black ear? That's, that's Rosemary, and the other one is her husband, Heathcliff. Well, in no time at all, they're going to have a big family running around in there. <laughs> How do you figure that? Um, Pop, will you explain it uh, to Mom? Well, now, Nell, you take the husband there and... Oh, never mind, I was just thinking of something else. May I ask a question? Where did you get these and how much did they cost? Mom, I don't want you to worry about that. I paid a little money down, I'm going to pay the rest of it on time. I want you to have the best. Just the best. I've got you, dear, and that's the best. Thank you. Ouch! <laughs> Coat bit me. <laughs> Mom, 
Something terrible has happened. Half of your coat has disappeared. Oh, Michael, no. Yes, which half? Rosemary. Oh, the better half. Maybe she's still in the room. Let's look. Yeah. Oh. But be careful. Don't step on her. Here, Rosemary, come to Mickey. Mom. Papa. I bet she got out through the window. Rosemary. Rosemary! <laughs> Nell, unless you really want a cat, you'd better start calling it something else. And does a chinchilla expert advise coochie coochie coochie? <laughs> Very funny. Hello, Freddy. Freddy, it's me. Who's you? <laughs> the chinchilla is gone. I'm sorry, I don't know anybody by the name of Chinchilla. Try the post office. <laughs> Who are you calling this time of night? Don't argue, will you, Fred? Just come over and bring a flashlight and a sack. We may have to beat the bushes until morning. Chinchilla hunt? But it's the middle of the night. Right. Now, don't worry, Mom. We'll find her. I hope you do, son. There might be a law against that code running around without a license. <laughs> See anything, Mitch? No, no. Maybe we're in the wrong place, Fred. You said it, boy. We should be in bed. <laughs> Just keep your eyes open for chinchilla tracks. Well, what do they look like? I don't know what they look like. Just uh, don't shine that in my eyes. What are you trying to do, blind me? I'm only trying to help you see where you're going, yeah, Mitch. Yeah, I put it where I'm going, not where I've been then. <laughs> should be around here. Wait a minute. Huh? Did you hear that over there? I don't hear nothing. Yeah, well, I heard something rustle. Now I'm going in there and flush it out. And then you throw the bag over what comes out, right? Throw the bag over whatever comes out? Right. You got it. Right. Hey, Fred. Fred, shine that light over here a little bit more, will you? Hey, hey, hey wait a minute. Huh? I think I can hear him, too. Let's advance on him, then. Okay. Shall we continue the hunt? Now be quiet, will you, Freddy? We're running out of backyard, Mick. Wait just a minute. Huh? I hope Rosemary didn't go through that hole in the fence over there into Jimmy Watkins' yard where he keeps those rabbits. Rabbits? Gee, Mick, don't you think the rabbits and the chinchillas will fight? Well, it depends upon what they got to argue about. <laughs> what do you see? Why is shining in the bush? Look. Now, 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 careful. You go into the bush, flush it out, and I'll catch him in the sack. Okay? Now, don't frighten her. I won't. Don't frighten her. You. You. Go to Daddy. Rosemary. Baby. Go to Daddy. Baby kittens. Rosemary kittens. Come. Sack time. <laughs> Rosemary. Oh, oh there, there. There I got her. I got her. The little darling. She's safe at last. Oh, wow. good. Now can I go home and get some sleep? Yeah. And after she has her first litter, I'll make you their godfather. Gee, thanks a lot. <laughs> Rosemary, little darling. Go. Oh, that's her. Hi, Pat. Oh, Mickey, are those your chinchillas? They sure are. Oh, they're adorable. Oh, please don't make them nervous. Rosemary here is about to become a mother any day, any minute. <laughs> oh, I think they're just too cute for words. But why did you bring them to work? If... <laughs> well, you could hardly expect me to leave them at a time like this. Or temperature 66. Uh-huh. <laughs> 75, 76, 77. What are you doing? Well, I, I can't take any chances, Pat. Why, if, if Rosemary was to get a chill, why, anything could happen. Mickey, after all. Uh, would you mind if they stayed in here with you, Pat? 
Well, not if they don't. Oh, thank you very much. Is it... Oh, uh, but please, uh, no noise, because it's liable to spoil the sheen on my mother's coat. <laughs> you expect me to get my work done. Pat, you're going to have to cooperate. Well, why don't you put them in Mr. Brown's office? He went to New York over the weekend. He won't be in today. That's a wonderful idea. Thank you. Now I'll raise the temperature to 95 degrees. Mickey. Yes, Pat? You just got a call from the main desk. You're wanted in the lobby. It's the 10 o'clock tour. You'll keep your eye on my fur coat, won't you? Oh, sure. And if anything happens, I'll let you know right away. Thank you. <laughs> Be gentle with her, Heathcliff. She's approaching life's biggest adventure. you until tomorrow. I got an early plane back. Is anything wrong? I'm not feeling very well. Oh, what seems to be the trouble? I must have caught cold or something. I've been having terrific chills. Oh, you should be home, sir. I am. I'm going right home. As soon as I clean up a few things on my desk. Ooh, these chills. Mickey Mulligan and hurry. <laughs> now I'm having hot chills. <laughs> trapping muskrats in my office. Muskrat? Well, nobody that I know, Mr. Brown. Then what's a cage of them doing in there but... Hold it. I might have known you'd be mixed up in this, Daniel Boone. What are those wild animals doing in there by my desk? They're not wild animals, sir. One of them snarled at me. That must have been Rosemary, sir. You see, she's about to become a mother. A mother? A, a mother to my mother's fur coat. They're chinchillas, Mr. Brown. You, you mean... Yes. Well, what are we standing here for? Why, why don't we do something? What, what, what should we do? Well, how should I know? Yes? Gentlemen, here's something you should all know. I have an important message from our sponsor. Watch where you're going, and what are you so nervous about? Well, I'm the godfather. Anything new, son? Say, Pop, she just scratched herself. Does that mean anything at all? Oh, that can mean anything. I don't think I can take much more of this, fellas. <laughs> Watch that, please. Don't you know any better than that? All I did was cough. All you did was cough. He just coughed, yeah. Well, it wasn't as if I coughed in their faces. Heavens, I looked three of you in the same position over an hour ago. You look as if you've been through the wars. Nell, I can't understand you women. Nothing seems to bother you. You didn't go through this much torture when Michael was born. Yeah, but you weren't a poor little dumb animal. Well, I think that's very sweet of you to say, dear. Now, is there anything I can do to help? Well, we, we could use a little coffee. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, women. Yeah. Hey, Pop! Pop, she just took a bite of pickle! Oh, that's a sure sign. Should be any second now. Rosemary! <laughs> Come back to us, Nick. You can't 
leave us now. Oh, leave him alone. This is the first rest he's had in days. Oh, Rosemary. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they're healthy and growing bigger every day. And they're just as cute as can be. Gee, I don't know what to say, Mom. <laughs> they seem happy about it all. <laughs> but, Mom, I promised you the best-looking fur coat in town, and now it's going to be nothing but rabbit chilla. I appreciate the thought, dear. And even if they were chinchillas, we wouldn't have the heart to make a coat out of them. I guess you're right. After all, they need their coats more than we do. They only have one, huh? Mickey Rooney will be back in just a moment. And now a word from next week's sponsor. <laughs> well, you can't go wrong, folks, when you take the advice from the good sponsors who will be bringing you our next show. Until that time, good night to all of you. From all of us. <laughs> Say good night. Good night.